Oh, wow. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Oh, that's hot. Will Smith hit Chris Rock on national television. In today's video, I'm going to be answering two questions. First, did Will Smith commit a crime? And if so, what his punishment could be? And second, can Chris Rock sue Will Smith for the damages he sustained? So first of all, this did happen in California, so California law is going to apply. So with respect to the criminal aspect of it, first, we're going to look at California Penal Code Section 242 battery under california penal code section 242 batteries defined as any willful and unlawful use of force or violence upon the person of another <laughs> it is important to note that an individual may be charged with battery even if there is no injury a simple unwanted or offensive touching of another is a sufficient degree of behavior upon which a prosecutor can base a charge of battery under the law here will smith hitting chris rock certainly was a willful act he intentionally did it additionally the act of hitting somebody is a use of force and is certainly violent it doesn't matter that chris rock wasn't necessarily injured or that he laughed it off wow will smith just smacked the shit out of me well, now that we've established that there's a prima facie case against Will Smith, now we look to whether or not there was any sort of legal justification for his actions. And I can already see the comments now. They're going to say, well, Tom, hey, Will Smith was defending his wife. This was an act of self-defense. But unfortunately for Will Smith, that argument is not going to work. Self-defense or defense of others is only ever appropriate if there's a threat of immediate physical harm. Here, there was no threat of immediate physical harm. Chris Rock was only making a joke. Even if that joke was inappropriate or offensive, that doesn't give somebody the excuse to use physical force in defense. And I can already see the comments now. My man Will did nothing wrong. He was simply just standing up for his wife. And while I totally get that, but if you think about it from a public policy, this law makes sense. We don't want people taking justice into their own hands and hurting other people every time somebody gets offended. Because as you can see, that is just a really slippery slope to go down if we allowed certain people to take up violence or violently interact with other people if they were offended, but but not others. And, you know, that's a we, we just cut it out all together. Now, obviously, there are different issues at play that may affect Will Smith just not being charged. But in the legal sense, if this were to be prosecuted, he doesn't have any self-defense justification the way I see it. So now let's look at Will Smith's potential punishment. California Penal Code Section 243A makes misdemeanor battery punishable by a fine of up to $2,000 by imprisonment in a county jail for up to six months or by both. Under California Penal Code Section 243C, inflicting an injury against anyone in the course of a battery can increase the penalties substantially. Well, under that case, Chris Rock clearly was not physically injured, so let's just go with this minimum. So, $2,000 and up to six months in a county jail. Now, realistically, they aren't going to want to put Will Smith in jail. They're likely not even going to want to prosecute him. But if they do prosecute him, it's a misdemeanor, not a felony, and up to a $2,000 fine. Okay, now let's talk about the civil case. Can Chris Rock sue Will Smith? And the answer to that is yes. If Chris Rock decides to sue, he would sue Will Smith under the tort of battery. The tort of battery is intentionally causing harmful or offensive contact. Very similar to the crime of battery, which we just discussed and went over. So again, Will Smith intentionally hit Chris Rock. The contact was harmful and offensive. So really the only issue is damages. Remember, in a civil court of law, the only thing you can recover is money damages. Nobody's gonna go to jail from a civil case. So really the only issue in the civil case is what damages, if any, did Chris Rock suffer? Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Chris Rock was hit, but it seems like he wasn't actually injured. It was probably more of a shock than anything else that he was hit on live TV. Clearly, there are two main types of damages, economic damages and non-economic damages. Generally, economic damages are things that are tangible, such as lost wages or loss of earning capacity. Now, non-economic damages are things that are 
not really as tangible, but certainly still present. And in my experience, non-economic damages are oftentimes far worse in catastrophic cases. Now, this isn't a catastrophic case by any means, but also there isn't really economic damages present because presumably Chris Rock is not going to miss any sort of work and doesn't have any permanent disability that's going to affect his ability to work or produce economic value in the future. Now, some people might say that it might make him less desirable for any sort of films or TVs, but there's no evidence to support that assertion. So we're really just looking at non-economic damages for this type of case. Here's a list of all non-economic damages that California acknowledges. Emotional distress. How much is Chris Rock's emotional distress worth for having to go through this? Obviously, this was embarrassing. A lot of people are talking about it. It might cause some emotional distress. Physical pain and suffering. How much should he be compensated for the physical slap? It seems like he wasn't necessarily injured, although I'm sure it hurt. Was it permanent? How long did the sting last? What is that worth? Probably not that much, especially based on his reaction. Loss of enjoyment of life. This is not applicable. There are no permanent injuries. He can still do everything that he was doing before. Damage to relationships with family members or spouses. No evidence to suggest that this is even in play. Pain and suffering. This might depend on how California defines pain and suffering. But if it's related to the physical injury, again, there likely wasn't a permanent physical injury. So you might not even be able to get pain and suffering unless you classify suffering as some sort of mental anguish which then again is very similar to emotional distress. How much anguish was he put in for having this happen in front of the entire world? Loss of consortium, definitely not at play here. That's like when your spouse gets injured and you can't do the same activities that you used to do with your spouse. Diminished quality of life, no evidence to suggest that there's going to be diminished quality of life. Permanent disabilities, there's no permanent disability or permanent disfigurement. So really, we're basically just going off of emotional distress. And y'all, the way I see it, while Will Smith technically did commit the tort of battery, the damages are likely too small for Chris Rock to want to pursue. I don't think he should pursue it because, again, the damages just aren't there and suing somebody might just do more harm than good from the PR perspective. So to recap, Will Smith almost certainly committed the crime of misdemeanor battery. Now, will the state pursue it? I don't know. And Will Smith also committed the tort of battery. But should Chris Rock pursue that? Almost certainly not. You were Chris Rock. Would you sue Will Smith? Let me know in the comments below. All right. See y'all. Bye. He's a catastrophic injury attorney who accidentally became a YouTuber. Attorney Tom.